the iPhone 16 Pro in the new Desert Storm color. It's slightly taller and wider and 12 grams heavier than the 15 Pro. The back glass on the Desert Titanium is a little pale for my liking, but the titanium frame looks really nice. A SIM ejector tool and a USB-C cable is all that's included, with the cable only being USB 2, despite the Pro models having a USB 3 port. This is not a North American variant, so we still have a physical SIM card slot. It's a 128GB model with the latest iOS 18 installed. I'll heat the back of the phone up to about 80 degrees, then clamp it down in the Refox RS50 to lift it open. I'll also add a little alcohol along the seam to help it along. Once I've opened up a crack, I can stick in a card. I'll need to be careful lifting off the glass as there's still a flex cable attached for the wireless charger coil. I'd like to thank PCBWay for sponsoring the channel, but also for providing the greatest hub of technical prototyping. Services normally reserved for high-end manufacturing now available to the public. You can get your own custom circuit boards from only $5 for 10 pieces. PCBWay can also assemble it for you, starting from just $30. The excellent support can help you find the right service for your needs. They also have a great open source community with thousands of projects and competitions where you can win cool prizes. So check the link in the description and get started today. PCBWay Prototype the easy way. I'll need to undo four tri-wing screws before I can release the flex. I should have disconnected the battery first, but I forgot. On the back glass we have the new 25 watt wireless charging coil, which matches the wired charging speeds of the iPhone now. It's surrounded by the MagSafe magnets. We also have the rear facing microphone which looks significantly larger than the usual ones found in phones. Apple seem to have really stepped up the audio recording capabilities. And finally the camera flash, which is ingress protected using a rubber gasket instead of double sided adhesive, which makes it easier to replace. Three more screws and we can access the battery connector with its handy label. I'll disconnect all the ribbon cables before undoing four screws holding down the LiDAR sensor and camera module.
The camera module contains a 48 megapixel 120 degree ultra wide camera, the 48 megapixel 24 millimeter fusion camera with second gen OIS, and the 120 millimeter five times periscope telephoto camera with 3D sensor shift OIS, which only the Pro Max had last year. We can see how large the periscope zoom camera is. It uses a zoom lens along the width of the module and then a mirror to point outwards or point light inwards. The front facing camera module is also free, which houses a 12 megapixel sensor with OIS, along with the face ID camera and dot projector. Six more screws and the upper loudspeaker comes free, with an antenna attached. Four standoff screws hold the motherboard down. And there are two ribbon cables for the screen, plugged into the back. One of which was nice enough to unclip itself. Here we can see the usual sandwiched double motherboard design with the new A18 Pro chip. Thirteen more screws and we can release the lower loudspeaker and Taptic engine. The loudspeaker channels out the bottom of the phone via this rubber gasket. I couldn't work out how to open this part, but it appears to be the barometer and another lower microphone inside. I think I need to remove the battery before taking out the charging flex. I was a bit confused by the metal panel over the battery, but now I can see that the whole battery has a metal shell. It's a 3582mAh battery with 13.94 watt hours, and it's almost 10% bigger than last year's 15 Pro.
Now I assumed the whole lower flex was just one piece, like Apple usually do. But then the charging port just popped off. Having a flex just for the charging port is going to make repairs cheaper and easier. Along with the side buttons, we have the new dedicated camera shutter button with the smallest little flex cable for the touch sensor. I can't remove this button assembly yet as it snakes underneath the frame and requires the screen to be removed. I really want to get a closer look at the new shutter button. But I can't see any way to get it off. It appears to be welded in. Smartphones with camera shutter buttons have been around for over a decade, most notably on the Sony Xperia range. And those had two stage shutter buttons, just like a proper camera. At the top we have an antenna flex and the upper microphone. And that's all that's left before taking... Oh, I forgot, the new Apple AI chip. Now I'll take the screen off. There are two brackets which cover the flex cable connections, so you can replace the screen without breaking in through the back. The only thing attached to the screen is the proximity sensor.